Okay, so uh, I'm kind of elated right now. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing my uh, Adventure Builders Club t-shirt. And that means I've got to do cool and awesome things at the moment. Uh, so something I did which uh, saves me a lot of monotony is um, uh, making a program that takes one wave file and splits it up into lots of smaller wave files. Because uh, sometimes I like to sample things like, say, um, you know, hitting household objects like a, an empty plastic milk carton or a baking tray. Or I like to sample, uh, you know, single drum machine type sounds with my dopefer. And uh, the problem with that is it takes a long time to go through that one big sample and turn it into lots of little ones, one for each hit. So I made a program that does that automatically. So uh, I just like to kind of show you that just because, you know, I'm excited. This is a point where normally I go into the terminal, but uh, people have told me before that they can't actually uh, read any of the tiny text in there. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, load up something uh, a bit easier to read. There, much more substantial. Right, let me just uh, start running this so it can do its thing in the background while I explain what it's doing. So, Python 3, wave split. Cool. Okay, so first of all, uh, it's got the number 1000. This is the threshold. So with a CD quality WAV file, um, it goes uh, up to, uh, it basically stores a series of numbers, uh, which can be positive or negative, and they go up to about uh, plus 32,768 or 32,767, uh, and it goes to negative the same. So uh, you've got 64,768, uh, no, 65,536 uh, different possible values it can be. So it's going to be somewhere in between there. And this first 1,000 says as soon as it goes above plus 1,000 or below negative 1,000, that's when we want to start making a new file. And the next 1,000 is a measurement of time. Uh, once uh, the sample goes back beneath that again, uh, it means that we might possibly want to uh, stop making the file, but we're not sure because sometimes it, you know, the waveform might just be passing through rather than actually staying in the middle. So uh, the next 1000 that we've given it says if it stays uh, beneath that threshold for another 1000 samples, that means that it's time to actually stop making the wave file. So it needs to you know, be consistently quiet for that amount of time. Uh, so these are you know, some pretty good default settings. So first of all, let's have a listen to what the original waveform sounds like. It's a you know bunch of single drum sounds, which is nice, but it was very tedious to go manually into the waveform and, and edit them to you know extract those one by one. So uh, let's see what the script has made instead. There, just the uh, first hit, it starts, you know, the file starts when the actual sound starts, the file finishes when the sound finishes. And it's the same for all the others. Now, you know, uh, I can see how this is a, a terribly geeky thing and probably not that interesting to many people, but if you're a musician who has to sample uh, single drum hits. Uh, this can be really quite useful. And the few other programs out there that are quite similar, um, Prepare the Heads Recycle is very good for drum loops and it automatically works out the BPM. And uh, Auto Sampler is an excellent program if you've got a whole range of notes and you want to do a whole scale at a time, uh, especially over a range of velocities. But if you're just doing something much simpler than that, if you've just got, say, a bunch of drum samples and you just want to isolate all of them. This is a very simple, very, you know, quick, elegant solution to that. And it doesn't have anything fancy that you don't need. So, you know, if you need to do that, just go to my website, bytenoise.co.uk, and you can download this program, a wave split. And, uh, you know, enjoy. I hope uh, other people get as much use out of it as I do. Cool. So, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.